Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Switchcraft. On today's episode, I would like to talk about the rumors of the Switch Pro that are now recirculating yet again. On top of that, I also want to talk about one of my new favorite games that's available on the Nintendo Switch, and it's absolutely free, so you can play it right now. Uh, if that sounds good to you, then buckle up. Let's get started with this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Ever since March of 2017, Nintendo fans have been speculating about what is Nintendo going to do to follow up their hybrid handheld console. And there's a couple of reasons for that. A, it's really fun to speculate about that stuff. B, the Nintendo Switch, when compared to the other systems that are available, even last gen, were, it was pretty weak. You know, the power just wasn't there. And that means that developers had to struggle in order to get things to work. Fast forward to now, we're now six months into the new generation of consoles. The Nintendo Switch, power-wise, has fallen way behind. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a horrible thing, because, look, clearly the Nintendo Switch is popular enough that publishers have to prioritize for it. They have to make sure that there is a Switch version available for most of their games because there's just too many wallets out there that are attached to a Nintendo Switch, and you can't ignore all of them. But if the Switch were a little more powerful, it would make things easier for those publishers, and Nintendo knows that. Well, we've had these rumors and speculation over the last four years. Why am I talking about it all over again? Well, number one, Bloomberg published an article where they say that they have uh, a source that is familiar with the matter, whatever that means. And they have some details. Now, maybe this is all BS and there's no way for us to know until only time will tell, essentially. But they have some details that are very interesting. Detail number one, manufacturing of this particular next system is supposed to start this summer in July. Availability for this system is supposed to happen in fall, which would be amazing for it to happen alongside, I don't know, let's say Breath of the Wild 2. I think that would be awesome. Another piece of information that they have is that apparently the price is going to be more than $300. Now, there's a couple of ways that you could go with this $300 price point. And if we go back to January when Nintendo had their live event, remember live events? Um, Nintendo announced the price of the Nintendo Switch at $300. A lot of people were dismissing it as, oh my goodness, Nintendo's overreaching again. This is way too much money. Nobody's going to spend that. Turns out Nintendo kind of nailed the price, especially when you bring in the Switch Lite uh, a little bit later with the uh, $200 price point. Well, this price point is supposed to be more. It's supposed to be more than that $300. I'm not sure where Nintendo can go. That's going to be a pretty tough needle to thread because you currently have the Xbox Series S, which is the low end uh, of the next, the, the lowest end of the next generation consoles, and that thing costs $300. Then you have the PS5 All Digital for $400, and then you have the PS5 and the Xbox Series X at $500. There's not a lot of wiggle room in there for Nintendo. Maybe 350, maybe 375, but going all the way up to 400 means that if people can choose between a Nintendo system and an Xbox system, they might go with Xbox. But at the same time, you also have to remember that you're also in addition to paying for whatever compute power that you're getting, you're also paying for the convenience of being able to take a Nintendo Switch with you. So there, there's a lot of math uh, that's not really, it's fuzzy math to, to try and nail down a price point. But, you know, this person who's quote unquote familiar with the matter is saying it's going to be more than $300. I can see people balking at that, but I can also see it succeeding depending on what Nintendo actually gives us. Now, let's take a look at history and see if the history backs up the, the idea behind these rumors. Not necessarily the price, or, but, or, but, but the timeline. Let's go back to 2011. 
Nintendo unveiled the 3DS. You know, the follow-up to the 2DS. They have the 3DS, which is an amazing system. Uh, they launched it too expensive. It didn't do too well, but then Nintendo lowered the price, did the ambassadors' gifts out to everybody, and uh, it, it kind of saved Nintendo because the 3DS carried Nintendo through the failure of the Wii U era. But the 3DS did extremely well. Four years later, in February, almost exactly four years later, in February of 2015, the new Nintendo 3DS was unveiled. Well, if we use that timeline and apply it to the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch launched in March of 2017. Here we are in 2021, four years later. It makes sense that this is the time that we're going to get the next iteration of the Nintendo Switch. So let's just assume that the rumor is true. When is Nintendo going to announce it? Well, I guess what people are speculating is that Nintendo is going to announce this incredibly soon because publishers want to be able to talk about what their games can do on the new system at E3, which happens on June 12th. And I'm recording this on May 29th. So when I say soon, I mean really soon. And I guess that makes sense because, you know, publishers are going to want to show off their games in the best light. And they're not going to want to show off their game running on say the 720p screen of the Nintendo Switch when they could show it off on maybe a 900p screen of the Nintendo Switch Pro. So I can see that argument holding weight. And for Nintendo to make that announcement before E3, that leads people to ask the question, well, what are they going to announce at E3? Well, I guess all of the things that you can do with this new hardware that you can't with the old hardware. Again, I hope that Nintendo doesn't launch games that'll only run on the new hardware. I want them to follow more of what Xbox is doing, where they've been releasing games that are running on the Xbox One, the Xbox Series S, and the Xbox Series X. So what do you think of these rumors of the next Nintendo Switch? Do you think over $300 is too much? Do you think we'll get one this fall? Let me know in the comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube and you can send me a message on Twitter at RunJumpStomp. Okay, we got the rumors out of the way. Let's talk about Knockout City. Knockout City is a dodgeball game uh, set in the future with a visual style that makes me think of the 1950s, both in the clothes that the characters wear and the cars that you see in the game. Everything feels like, what if we just never let go of like the 50s greaser look and let it continue for 100 years? What would that look like then? And it's pretty cool. It's a dodgeball game where you are 3v3 or 4v4 or even 1v1 and uh, you pick up a ball and you throw it at the other person. If you hit them, they lose a hit point. If you if they catch it, then they can throw it back at you. And that's the essence of the game. It's really fun and very, very fast-paced and frantic. I highly recommend it to anybody who hasn't tried it yet. In addition to being able to pick up and throw a ball, they also have a special ball that you can pick. It's randomized, so each game... That you play there'll be a different special ball that's available maybe a moon ball that lets you jump really high or if you fully charge the moon ball and hit somebody with it they will float away which means that they're an easier target you have a bomb ball which explodes on contact there's a um uh, a cage ball if you throw it and hit somebody with them it will lock them in a cage which then you can pick up and you can throw either at another player or you can throw it over a cliff um, and there's a whole bunch of other ones like the the multi-ball, which is actually three instead of one. So you pick up three and now you can pass them around to your partners if you want, or you can throw them in quick succession to take somebody out. You have the ability to curve your shots basically by doing a jump and either a flip or a twirl in the air when you jump and letting go in the middle of that flip or twirl. And what this will allow you to do is if you're in the middle of a flip, it will lob the ball so it goes up high and comes down. Maybe you want to throw over a wall to hit somebody. Or you can throw around a wall by doing a spin 
during your throw. Uh, there's a lot of finesse to the game, but you don't have to worry about aim because all of the aiming is done for you, which might sound bad, but when you're doing all of this other stuff like flipping and twirling and catching at the same time, you don't have time to aim anyway. In addition to everything that I said, there's also this other aspect of the gameplay that is very high risk and high reward. And it's very cool whenever games do things like that. At any time, and I forget which button you have to push, but you can push a button and turn into a ball. And then a member of your team can pick you up and throw you at an enemy. Now, if you get hit with a regular ball, you lose one hit point. Every player has two hit points. If you get hit with a person in ball form, you will instantly be KO'd. In addition to that, if you fully charge before throwing a person in ball form, they will turn into a bomb that then they can steer where it's going to land, and it'll be a big bomb that explodes and hits a bunch of people. The reason that you want to be careful about doing this stuff is because A, if you are, let, let's forget about the bomb form for a second. Just in regular ball form, if somebody catches you, then they can just turn and throw you over a cliff. So you got to be really careful there. But then in bomb form, you are painting a picture on the ground and everybody knows where you're going to be. So if the players on the enemy team are paying close enough attention, they can run away from that spot, grab a ball, turn around, wait for you to land, you're going to be vulnerable, and then nail you with it. So you got to be really, really careful when you do this, which is why I like the high-risk, high-reward part of the game. You can also do uh, jumps and dashes, and uh, you can do a double jump, which will pull out like a little glider, and you'll be able to glide for a very, very short time, uh, depending on how high you are when you start. But overall, Knockout City is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm not sure if I said this or not yet, but the game is currently in free trial mode until tomorrow, and then after that, you have to pay $20 for it. I do think it's worth $20. However, the game also has microtransactions. Now, those microtransactions are all optional, and it's for cosmetic stuff, and it's just for leveling up faster. That doesn't really bother me, but I feel like this game would do so much better if it were just completely free to play. It's also cross-play. So I've been playing mostly on my Xbox, but then I also logged in on my account on my Nintendo Switch, and I was able to play there as well using the same account. Uh, you can So it has both cross-play and cross-progression. Uh, so if you have multiple systems, it's on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Um, I... I don't think that uh, you would have to you would have to buy it multiple times if you want to play it on multiple platforms, uh, but you know it does have cross progression. But the best part about it is that is it has cross play. So if you're playing on Switch and I'm playing on Xbox, we can still play together. All right, before we move on and and finish up the show, I do want to just really quickly talk about Dragon Quest. They had the Dragon Quest 35th anniversary um, Nintendo Switch had Dragon Quest 11s so I think people are assuming that Dragon Quest 12 is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch well Dragon Quest 12 is running on Unreal Engine 5 Dragon Quest 11s is Unreal Engine 4 but Unreal Engine 5 is supported by the Nintendo Switch so it is possible that Dragon Quest 12 will come to the Nintendo Switch then we also have uh, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D. I think that's coming to the Nintendo Switch as well because we had Octopath Traveler on the Nintendo Switch and they are sharing that same art style. I'm guessing that we'll probably get all of those Dragon Quest games on the Nintendo Switch as well. Anyway, let me know if I missed any Nintendo news this week. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you all next time. Stay awesome, everybody.